The noblest of lives. The noblest of lives. Verse 13 says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Lord, we thank you, God, for laying, you laying down your life for us. We thank you, Lord, for setting the greatest example that's ever been set. Father, there's not a thing we can do, Lord, to do any more than what your life, Lord, portrayed here on this earth. And, Lord, your sacrifice and your commitment to loving us and, Lord, to um, just submitting yourself to the will of the Father. And, God, we just ask tonight, Lord, that um, as I just come before your throne, that you just bless us with your presence tonight. Whatever way, shape, form, or fashion you see fit to pour that out upon us, we just ask, just humbly tonight, Lord, that you be with us. We thank you for that, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, if you, if you look at this verse, um, I was kind of, in my mind, I was headed toward the next great I am statement that Jesus had made. And you can find it over in John 14 where he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. But God really um, distinctly just laid this upon my heart for tonight. And so uh, and we got another surprise after the service tonight. Um, some folks in our church have brought some. They just out of the blue felt led to do it. I, I just love people feel led to look, do this, man. This is awesome. They brought some ice cream and some stuff, some goodies back there. They want to they wanna just treat the whole church. And so when we get done tonight, we want all y'all to stay, all our visitors, all our friends, all our normal folks. And we have this little ice cream social back there in the back. They're going to have it laid out for you. All I got to do is go back there and eat. Miss Janice, I got everything took care of back there. You don't worry a bit. You in the kitchen, folks. Y'all just take your sugar shot before we roll, okay? <laughs> All right, just make sure you double up on your sugar shot. I know how y'all work now. Double up on that insulin. I, I'm learning, so when I get there, I know how to do it. I know how to do it. But um, I'm just so y'all stay hanging around with us for a little while. But really and truly, uh, this verse right here has kind of been in my mind. In my heart, kind of in the back burner, just, just all this week. All this week. And this sermon tonight, now, the ultimate, the ultimate, I mean, just the perfect, the perfect example of humility and commitment and sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And boy, when God, when God just spoke these words and recorded them in Scripture for us to read later, there's just nothing else you really think about more than the cross whenever you read this verse. I mean, Jesus is truly our friend. He's truly shown the greatest love. There's just, there's just nothing. I mean, there's nothing more you can say when you look at the cross. Amen. When you just think about what Jesus did, there's, there's nothing more you can say to add to that. If you just point a person toward what Christ did and you show them what Christ has done, that's, that's the greatest example of love and laying down your life that you've ever seen. Um, but when you get back over to John 14 where um, is, he speaks to him and he makes that next great I am statement and he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Um, before that and after that, around in those chapters, you can read around in them, um, he, they went to the upper room, he'd watched the disciples' feet not long before then. Oh my goodness, you know, that's just the Son of God washed men's dirty feet. The lowliest thing that could have been, you know, anybody could have had to do. He didn't say a word, boy. He just, uh, he, didn't have, he didn't have to tell him. When he was sitting in that room and he took that towel and he bent down there and he started washing them men's feet. He, he didn't have to say anything to them. I mean, my goodness, what a lesson he taught them. Amen. And then Judas, Judas kind of peels out and the Lord sends him on his way. To go do what we all know he did in betraying Christ. And just He was headed out to all those things to go on. And, you know, Jesus, he uh, gave Peter a heads up that he was going to deny him as much as Peter wanted to never leave Christ's side. And he let the disciples know. He just let them know that, hey, he said, I'm going to be leaving. And where I'm going, you can't go right now. And it troubled him. It really troubled him thinking about living life without Christ physically with him. And in those verses in John 14, 1, he says, Let not your heart be troubled. And we all know that, that at times our heart gets troubled. And if you've ever had trouble with your heart, if you've ever had trouble in your heart, if you've ever had that kind of trouble that he's talking about, not, not physical trouble there, but he's talking about 
a troubled heart. If you've ever had a troubled heart, if you've ever had unpeaceful moments, you know what he's talking about. And it just, it just took him and just, I mean, really just sent them into shock that they were going to have to be without Christ. They'd been with him for three and a half years. I mean, he was everything to them. They had left everything and he was going to leave. And he said he had to leave those so he could go and he could prepare a place for them. And you know, he also, whenever he left on down, you can read that he said that when he leaves, he's going to send a comfort. The Holy Spirit of God was going to come and, and take his place here on this earth and work here on this earth. And the Holy Spirit of God works in the hearts of men and works through men to do God's work here on this earth. And that's kind of the point and the place I'm getting to. Is that there are no perfect examples. Any, all of us are sinners. My goodness, I'm a sinner. I pastor this church, but I'm a sinner. We, even as leaders in the church, we, we make mistakes. Um, we are not mistake-free. We get hurt. We have troubled times in our ministries. We have times when, um, you know, we make mistakes, uh, I mean, morally, financially, whatever. We, we make mistakes like everybody else at times. And so it's a great burden to bear. And I tell you, you know, you know that you're a called man when you're called to the ministry because the days that tell you that you're called are not the days when people will pat you on their back or say good job. They're the days when you just want to pack your stuff up and you want to go home. You understand what I mean? You just want to pack your stuff up, and you, but there's something inside of you that's burning like Jeremiah said that just won't go away. And Tuesday night I was, um, I mean really, I'm just going to say what the Lord laid on my heart. Now listen, listen to me. Tuesday night I was, preaching revival over at Yoma Chapel Baptist Church. And when I went over there to preach that sermon, and I was preparing to preach that sermon, and that sermon was really challenging to the leadership in that church. I mean, it was really a challenge to the leadership in that church. And, um, you know, I, I guess Brian, he was there, and um, the Maddox and all, they can tell you, man, I, I, our deacons, I, I really use them a bunch. Whenever I was talking about the examples in that service. And because those people over there in other places have asked, they say, well, you know, how can you be in ministry for like 10 or 11 years and things be going on and it be successful? I mean, that's all glory to God with all those things that, that they talk about. I, I just, we don't even mention those things at our church. But I'm just telling you, when people ask those questions, I tell them, that there's been a great sacrifice made by our Lord first and foremost, and he's headed the ship, and he supplied the power and the provisions we needed. But another thing that I tell them that I try not to miss telling them is there have been some men and some women in this church, and it, what I'm saying tonight is not just for our deacons, but also for every person in here who's done what that verse says in John 15. And you may be a visitor here, you may be somebody that's new here, but you may fit this bill when he said, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. I've been very challenged by a book I've read before and I've been reading it again, but it's called Dying to Preach. And in there in that book, the man speaks about and he talks about that if you really want to, if you really want to be used by God, you've got to lay down your life. There are going to be some things you're going to have to miss. There are going to be some things you have to give up. There's going to be some have to be some times things you don't do and you sacrifice that other people can do so you can go and do what God's called you to do. That's, what, that's the challenge to us as preachers in that book. And I tell you today that there's people in this church today that I just really thank God for that fit the bill of this um, verse right here. And I'm just uh, so privileged to get to serve with you. And you've laid down your life. In other words, you know, you've done without some things. You've done without doing some things. You've sacrificed some things and your family has. So you could go and you could serve God so that other people could be blessed by God. And so other people could feel the love of Jesus Christ. And God has used you greatly. And I just want to thank you for that tonight. That's really what I wanted to come to do is just come and tell you thank you for that tonight. You know, when I was, uh, Tuesday night when I was talking, um, I, told, I told them folks over there, I said, and I didn't talk about anything that ain't public anyhow. Don't worry about that. But... I talked about some things that those men have done, stood up and done in our church. And I'm just telling you right now, I, one of the things I told them, and it's a great privilege of my life as a pastor right now, that I thought about Tuesday when I was getting ready to preach that sermon. You know, you hear a lot of preachers, they might talk about having trouble with deacons and stuff like that. 
And before I started preaching that sermon, I told those folks in that church, I said, listen, I said, I can't, I can't talk about that. I've never, I've never experienced that. I said, you know, the four men that I serve with and their wives and their families are four of my heroes. They're four of the greatest people I've ever met on the face of this earth. And when I say this, I say this with all sincerity. They have laid down their life. They have really put aside their life and committed themselves to the life of this church so this church could, so this church could thrive and so that you could be blessed in many ways. And you don't get to see all the ways and the things that they do, but I get to see them. I get to see the problems they're confronted with. I get to see the th issues that they had to take on. And it just amazes me how much God you see in them and the wisdom they use to respond. And I just get thinking about this verse, and I just am so thankful. I am so thankful for every one of you here at our church tonight. So thankful for every one of you here that you may not even be a part of our church, but you serve God and you, you, you put this to work in your life. You really have committed your life to serving Jesus Christ because... I know in a church, it's not a great thing. We don't go around talking about one another and bragging on one another because that's just not what we need to do as Christians. We all know that. But I just felt like tonight I just needed to come and just let you know that y'all are acting a whole lot like Jesus Christ and it looks beautiful on you. And I'm thankful for every sacrifice you make. And I tell you, I, I'm, I just, I'm just as sorry for the times that you've been hurt by people that you're trying to love and been discouraged in things sometimes when you're trying to do the best you can do. But I just want to tell you tonight that God sees it. Amen. God sees it. you got a servant's heart. you got a servant's heart and a given heart. And that won't be, I'm telling you, that is not taken for granted by God. And every hurt and every pain you've got, every tear you've shed in serving God, one day Jesus Christ himself is going to wipe away the tears from our eyes. Amen. And I'm telling you, we're going to be rewarded eternally for what we do for Christ. And I'm telling you, it's like the, the song says. I've been listening to a song this afternoon. I was in here praying. I was spending a long time in here praying for the deacons of our church and the leaders of our church. And I think about the song, you know, it says, Jesus paid it all. Amen. Yeah. Jesus paid it all. Listen to me now. We sing this song all the time. We think about it. Jesus paid it all. But look what the next thing it says. All to him I owe. Yeah. I thank God there are people that are still here and God blessed America in 2016 that are willing to give everything they got for the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm thankful tonight that I serve in a place where there are people that are still dedicated. Even though we, we, we are, are saved by grace, but once we're saved, we're saved unto good works. And I thank God that there's people that want to spend the rest of their life totally committing their life, sacrificing their life, giving their life for their fellow man so that God could be glorified and so that we could please the heart of our Father in heaven. I just thank God I get to serve in a place like that. And it's an honor and a privilege to be your pastor. And I know it's Pastor Appreciation Month, and I know all that good stuff's coming. Y'all need to dote on Shay. She's the one, right? Um, she's the one that has to put up with me, and I get to tell all those funny stories that you got to laugh about about her this morning. And she still loves me. But I want to take the time tonight to just know it's a, a great opportunity to just really um, just say thank you to the deacons of our church, and I'm telling you, it's for every one of you that sacrifice in our church, not just for them, but I just know that they've got a servant's heart and they lead our church. And before we go in there in just a minute to, um, you know, eat the ice cream and have a good time getting to know one another better, um, I just want to take a minute and ask those men if they'd come up here, up front. Come on, don't be shy. They don't like it, I'm telling you. They don't like it. They feel like, you know how when you was a little boy and your mama dressed you up for Easter and put a bow tie on you and you can't stand the pictures? That's how they feel about it now. They don't like this, but it's all good. And I just want to um, just take and just pray over these fellows and just give you all a chance to come tell them thank you. And um, we're going to let them and their wives go eat first tonight. And I just know it's a privilege to get to serve with them. A privilege to get to serve with them. And I know if your ears were burning Tuesday night, now you know why. <laughs> now you know why. All right? Anybody else want to come up here and pray with them? With me? Any of y'all. All y'all. If y'all want to come up.